1967 Marburg virus outbreak. In August 1967, the idyllic town of Marburg, Germany, became the epicenter of a mysterious and deadly outbreak. Individuals inexplicably started experiencing muscle pain, headaches, malaise, and rapidly increasing body temperatures. Initially baffled, medical officials contained the first patients to their homes, treating them in isolation to control the potential spread of a virus. However, as symptoms intensified, the infected were transferred to university hospitals in Marburg and Frankfurt for close monitoring. Fever and bleeding from various orifices marked a terrifying progression of the illness. Despite containment efforts, the infection ravaged their bodies, and within a week, many patients faced severe hemorrhagic shock. Officials raced against time to identify the elusive virus and prevent further infections. A breakthrough came when a pathology technician contracted the virus after accidentally cutting himself during a post-mortem examination. This discovery suggested bloodborne transmission. Epidemiologists then traced the infection to employees of a vaccine manufacturer named Beringberka and an institute that handled similar substances. The common link, contact with blood and organs of African green monkeys recently imported from Uganda. Investigators speculated that the monkeys were infected in Uganda or possibly in London during temporary storage with other animals. With the source and transmission method identified, the virus was finally contained. The virus was later named the Marburg virus after the city where it was first discovered. The 1967 outbreak recorded 32 confirmed cases and seven deaths, but Marburg's deadly legacy was far from over. Although not known for massive outbreaks, the Marburg virus boasts a chilling mortality rate, up to 88% for certain strains. Re-emerging several times throughout modern history, the virus claimed over 200 lives in Angola between 2004 and 2005. Ghana reported four deaths in 2022. And in early 2023, fatalities were recorded in Spain, Central Africa, and Tanzania. The Marburg virus's future strains remain unknown, but as history has shown, this lethal virus may continue to emerge and threaten human lives. 1977 Russian Flu The 1977 outbreak of the Russian flu was a global pandemic that primarily affected younger populations. Despite being referred to as the Russian flu, the outbreak is believed to have originated in northern China in May of 1977, prior to any cases being recorded in the Soviet Union. Initially, China was successful in slowing the spread of the virus, which was identified as the H1N1 influenza A strain, but it soon made its way to Siberia and rapidly spread throughout the Soviet Union. The outbreak primarily affected individuals younger than 26, putting pressure on the education system and various industries. The virus also reached the UK and the US in late 1977 and January 1978, respectively. It primarily impacted students and military personnel in those regions. While the mortality rate of H1N1 strains is relatively low, claiming around 5 out of 100,000 infected individuals, the 1977 virus's rapid spread resulted in an estimated 700,000 deaths worldwide. Before the 1977 outbreak, the H1N1 influenza A virus had seemingly vanished from the world after 1957. This disappearance was due to the emergence of a new pandemic strain, H2N2. The H2N2 strain outcompeted H1N1 in the human population, effectively replacing it and causing the latter to cease circulating globally. The re-emergence of the H1N1 virus in 1977 after a 20-year absence was highly unusual and unexpected. The fact that the 1977 strain was almost genetically identical to the one circulating in the 1950s fueled suspicions that the outbreak resulted from a laboratory escape rather than natural evolution. Under normal circumstances, the virus would have been expected to evolve and accumulate genetic changes over time. However, the 1977 strain seemed to have remained frozen in its genetic makeup since the 1950s. The genetic similarity to the 1950s H1N1 strain also explained why it had less impact on older populations who likely had immunity due to exposure earlier in their lives. 
Chinese and Russian labs vehemently deny the possibility of a laboratory leak, but it remains one of the most scientifically compelling explanations. The existence of old influenza virus samples used for research or forgotten in defunct labs remains a concern due to the possibility of leaks. In 2005, a U.S. lab sent out 5,000 vials of the 1957 H2N2 influenza strain as part of a testing kit for modern flu cases. If any of these samples had escaped containment, people born after the last H2N2 outbreak in 1968 would have had no immunity. 1979 Sverdlovsk Anthrax Leak In April 1979, the city of Sverdlovsk, now known as Yekaterinburg in the Soviet Union, witnessed a catastrophic event that claimed the lives of at least 66 people and numerous animals. This incident resulted from an accidental release of anthrax spores from a secret military microbiology facility known as Compound 19, which was involved in developing biological weapons. Anthrax, a deadly bacterial infection, poses significant dangers to both humans and animals. The bacterium, Bacillus anthracis, thrives in soil and releases spores that can infect grazing animals, subsequently contaminating their products, such as meat, wool, or hides. Prompt diagnosis and antibiotic treatment can save lives. However, if left untreated, anthrax can cause severe respiratory disease, shock, and death. On April 2, 1979, a cloud of anthrax spores was released into the atmosphere from the facility due to a breach of safety protocols. A malfunction in the air filtration system, combined with the removal of an air filter for maintenance, allowed the deadly spores to escape. The wind carried the spores toward the nearby city and surrounding areas, leading to widespread contamination. Soon after, people and animals in the affected areas began to fall ill. The symptoms of anthrax infection, such as high fever and difficulty breathing, started manifesting in those exposed to the spores. Many victims succumbed to their infection within days. In addition to human casualties, thousands of livestock were also affected, resulting in their deaths or culling to prevent the spread of the disease. Initially, the Soviet government tried to cover up the incident by blaming the outbreak on contaminated meat. They insisted that the deaths were caused by people consuming meat from infected animals. However, this explanation was not accepted by the international community, particularly by the United States which suspected a link to the Soviet Union's biological weapons program. Sverdlovsk, where the outbreak originated, had been central to the Soviet weapons program since the Second World War and became a closed city during the Cold War. By the 1970s, 87% of the city's production was military, largely producing munitions such as missiles, rockets, and tanks. Although the facility in question had been established in the late 1940s, it was not until the 1970s that research began to focus on anthrax. In 1992, after the dissolution of the Soviet Union, the truth about the Sverdlovsk anthrax leak was finally revealed. Russian President Boris Yeltsin admitted that the outbreak was indeed the result of an accident at a military facility. Official documents revealed that a northeasterly wind on the day of the accident carried only a few milligrams of spores as far as 30 miles downwind. While biological research facilities around the world today deny that they possess anthrax spores, history has clearly shown that such claims should be treated with skepticism. Prion Research Leak In the world of prion research, scientists grapple with an enigmatic and deadly adversary. Prions, abnormally folded proteins, possess the startling ability to induce normal proteins to adopt their misfolded conformation, setting off a self-propagating chain reaction. These rogue proteins are responsible for causing a group of rare, fatal neurodegenerative disorders such as Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease or CJD in humans. These devastating diseases are marked by the accumulation of abnormal prion proteins in the brain, ultimately leading to the progressive degeneration of brain tissue. Studying prions proves to be a formidable challenge, as they are resistant to standard sterilization procedures and can withstand extreme conditions. When an individual becomes infected with prions, they typically experience mental deterioration as the prions corrupt their cells, leaving the brain riddled with microscopic holes reminiscent of a sponge. 
Victims display symptoms of dementia and impaired motor functions. Most patients succumb to the disease within a few months to a year. Tragically, there is no cure. Prions can spread through contact with infected brain matter, and despite their potential to cause fatalities, prion research remains relatively commonplace, with occasional accidents and leaks. In a chilling turn of events in 2012, the University of Texas inadvertently sent live prion samples to numerous labs across the globe. Believing they were shipping inactive samples, the university inadvertently sent live prions due to a labeling mistake. When a recipient lab in Maryland discovered that the samples had infected live mice, they alerted the University of Texas. An investigation then uncovered the extent of this potentially catastrophic error. In 2019, the prion research community was shaken by the tragic death of a young French lab worker, Emily Jomain, who succumbed to variant CJD. Nine years earlier, Emily accidentally stabbed her thumb while working in a prion lab at France's National Research Institute for Agriculture, Food, and Environment. Although aware of the potential contamination, it took more than seven years for symptoms to emerge. Emily's descent began with burning pain in her right shoulder and neck, progressing to depression, anxiety, memory impairment, and visual hallucinations. In time, her muscles stiffened, and she lost the ability to move and speak. A post-mortem analysis confirmed the diagnosis of variant CJD. Though it is possible that Emily contracted the disease through contaminated meat, researchers consider this unlikely due to the absence of similar cases in France since 2014. When a second case emerged years later, French authorities responded by temporarily banning prion research and conducting an investigation. 1978 UK smallpox outbreak. In the summer of 1978, the city of Birmingham in the United Kingdom faced an enemy it could not see. Smallpox, a deadly and contagious virus thought to be eradicated, reared its ugly head, threatening the lives of everyone in its path. The incident began at the Birmingham Medical School, where an unsuspecting medical photographer named Janet Parker worked diligently in her darkroom. Little did she know that her life was about to change forever. A floor above her in a secure laboratory, Dr. Henry Bedson, a respected virologist, was studying smallpox to contribute to the global eradication campaign. One fateful day in August, Janet began to feel unwell and developed flu-like symptoms and a rash. As her condition deteriorated, she was admitted to the East Birmingham Hospital. The doctors initially diagnosed her with a drug reaction, but soon they realized the horrifying truth. Janet had contracted smallpox. Smallpox is a highly contagious and deadly viral disease caused by the variola virus, which was responsible for numerous epidemics throughout human history. It is characterized by a severe rash that develops into pus-filled blisters, ultimately leaving disfiguring scars on survivors. The disease posed a significant threat to global health due to its high mortality rate, with up to 30% of infected individuals succumbing to its effects. Panic swept through the medical community. How had Janet, who had had no direct contact with the virus, contracted smallpox? The World Health Organization was notified, and an investigation began. Investigators traced the source of the virus back to Dr. Benson's lab. It appeared that the deadly pathogen had somehow escaped containment and made its way through the building's ventilation system, infecting Janet in her dark room below. The realization was a chilling reminder of the unpredictability and resilience of the virus. The government acted quickly, initiating a massive vaccination campaign. Thousands of people, including Janet's friends, family, and co-workers, were vaccinated to prevent the further spread of the virus. Over 500 people were placed in quarantine. Meanwhile, Janet fought for her life in an isolation unit, surrounded by doctors and nurses in protective gear. Despite the best efforts of the medical staff, Janet succumbed to smallpox on September 11, 1978, becoming the world's last known victim of the virus. Her mother, who had been exposed to the virus while visiting Janet in the hospital, also fell ill but recovered. She was the only other individual to be infected. The 1978 UK smallpox outbreak had a lasting impact on the world. It reinforced the need for strict biosecurity measures 
and served as a stark reminder of the devastating consequences of even the smallest lapse in containment. Thank you for watching Dark Five. Like and subscribe to continue exploring the greatest mysteries of this world and beyond. And let me know if there are any other dark sides of science that you want me to investigate.